Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Data Driven Health Radio. I'm your host, Dave Korsunsky, and my special guest today is Kara Collier from NutriSense. And we're going to dive into all things related to continuous glucose monitoring, one of the most promising technologies on the market today for health empowerment. So we're really excited to dive in, hear the founder's story, and hear how Kara and her company are transforming health outcomes. So welcome to the show, Kara. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I connected with your co-founder, Dan. We've, we've been exchanging emails and startup war stories together <laughs> for the past couple of years. So um, we, we share our successes sometimes and also our, our tales of woe, typically when we're out there fundraising. So um, uh, he, he suggested we, we connect you and I. For the show, he he seems to think that you're the smarter one of the two. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I won't argue with him on that. But um, give us a little bit of a, a background on yourself, and um, then also we'd we'd just love to hear how you started the company. What was it that triggered you and Dan to say, "Hey, this is something we want to do"? I know that you guys were early in the game on CGM. So you've been around a lot longer than some of the other newcomers on the block. So you guys obviously saw something a lot earlier than a lot of the other companies that are now kind of piling in. So um, I'd love to learn about your background and then tell us how the company, the company started. Certainly. Yeah. So a little bit about myself to start. Um, I am a registered dietitian. So I started my career in the traditional healthcare world. So I was working as a dietitian primarily in critical care nutrition. So in the ICUs and the hospitals. Um, and typically when you think about ICUs, you expect to see gunshot wounds or car trauma, you know, accident trauma, but more often what you're seeing in the ICU is actually immediate complications from lifestyle related chronic conditions. So we're talking about the diabetic who either didn't know they were diabetic for 20 years or they never controlled it and now they're needing to have a leg amputation or the person who has uncontrolled hypertension and we're needing to put them on kidney dialysis. So what I was seeing in that experience was over and over all of this financial costs, this suffering, all of this time and expense for something that was very clearly could have been prevented, but we just weren't, you know, we weren't doing the right actions. We didn't have the right systems in place to help kind of prevent some of these complications. And this was every day, day in and day out. Uh, so that really was the initial spark for me to try to brainstorm and think about other ways to solve some of these huge problems that I was seeing. Um, and there was multiple layers within the healthcare system or what I was seeing that was frustrating, not just that we're catching people really late, decades too late, not a couple months, not a couple years, but decades, but also just the lack of motivation for behavior change by the time you catch someone at that stage. It's really hard to undo for decades of bad habits at that point. Mm -hmm. And then also kind of the cherry on top of that was just the frustration with some of the systems that are already built in. Um, as a dietitian, being trained in traditional dietetics, a lot of our information was antiquated or biased or skewed. And you started to realize when you could make that connection with someone and you're giving them the traditional carbohydrate counting, matching to your insulin injections for a diabetic, that it wasn't actually working that well. You know, they're maybe chasing their glucose all day with the insulin injections and having consistent carbohydrates all day, but we're definitely never reversing or uh, minimizing the problem, addressing the root cause. And kind of, you know, as a final story, my last straw was I was working in the hospitals and we serve sodas on people's trays, patient trays. Diabetics get a diet soda, but everyone else gets a small can of soda with their meals. And to me, that was just absolutely absurd. You know, we're trying to make people healthier. We're trying to help them on this journey back to health. And we're adding more poison to the fire there. Uh, and I spent, you know, months, almost a whole year working with hospital administration, with the nutrition department, campaigning to remove this. And at the end, um, nothing happened. You know, most people were not that interested in it. 
didn't really see my point, um, didn't find it important. And it was just the last straw of a frustration that I felt like I couldn't make the difference I was looking for in that current system. Um, and so that's when I kind of jumped ship and looked elsewhere. After that, I went to a different nutrition software, um, kind of learned more about startups and software while the whole time I was there, I was thinking about some of these problems I was seeing um, and really wanting to solve it in a more concrete way. So my own kind of side journey was leading me towards really researching some of these root causes, thinking about behavior change, prevention. And it led me to thinking about metabolic health specifically, which then further led me to these continuous glucose monitors or CGMs. You know, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk more about them, but uh, it was a very interesting solution to some of these problems I was seeing. So I was starting to see how this could play out of, if you had this real time data about what's happening on the inside and you had it way before, you know, you get to that stage of in an ICU with a complication of a condition, then we can fix things early on. And we can also increase some of that motivation to make behavior change because it's real data from your body in real time. And that's a lot of time what's lacking. You know, you go to your doctor's office and they're like, hey, your A1C is high. Looks like you're a diabetic now. You really need to stop eating sugar and start working out. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and that's like all you get. You go home, you do it for a little bit, but it's hard to stick to it. There's so many problems with the behavior change aspect where this real time data, the nature of a continuous data stream is so helpful for that. So I was kind of on my own discovering these devices, wearing them on myself, putting them on my friends and family, researching this. And then Dan, my co-founder, was kind of coming at it from a different angle. And at the time, we didn't know each other. Um, he, his sister is a type one diabetic. So she's been wearing these continuous glucose monitors all her life. So he's been exposed to that from a different angle. And he was working in healthcare consulting. So he was consulting for the big companies, trying to figure out how to you know, increase their profitability, um, looking at financial angles and realizing, you know, we put more and more money into healthcare system, but people are getting sicker and sicker. So he had that idea of, wow, this device my sister wears, that's a life-saving device for her, might actually help solve some of these other problems kind of from a financial angle. And we actually have a third co-founder, Alex, who um, he has a tech background and he started and ran previous startups before, but he's always been in kind of into nutrition and biohacking himself. So he was using these on himself and he built a software and app to uh, showcase the data in a better way because as many people who've worn a CGM before know, the Libre or Dexcom app that normally comes with the CGM is, is designed for a diabetic. So you get your glucose number, maybe you have a place to put input how much insulin you're taking and you don't really get anything else. So he was building this for himself. Dan and Alex have been friends for a really long time. And then they posted something on LinkedIn about building their startup idea that got posted by someone else. And I just happened to stumble across it. And I was like, this is the exact idea I have been building. And so I reached out to them and they were looking for a third person who had their nutrition or healthcare expertise. And we just hit it off from there. So um, I came to Chicago where they were, we met up, we built the idea, we started from scratch and, and the three of us kind of took off from there. So it was a little bit serendipitous as well. Totally. I love it. It's just uh, maybe it's serendipity, maybe not. We just don't know exactly how those things work, but um, that's a philosophical discussion for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you brought up some really amazing stuff there, and I just want to go back to a few things you mentioned and um, unpack it a little bit more. One of the first things I jotted down here that I guess was... Um, <clears throat> I guess I'll say somewhat surprising, but maybe I shouldn't be surprised, is that working in the emergency room, most of the people coming in were coming in from a chronic lifestyle issue that yeah. had been manifesting for possibly decades undiagnosed or more. <clears throat> you wouldn't expect to hear that answer in an emergency room. You'd expect to hear that, that those are the people coming into the GP's office for the checkups and the, and the, and the, the general consultations, but you wouldn't necessarily expect that that chronic lifestyle health conditions are the number one thing bringing people in the emergency room. I know I have a family member who um, 
his blood sugar just got out of control. Young skinny guy just didn't know what he was putting in his body and it sent him into the emergency room just, just from blood glucose. So that, that one kind of struck me. It's that these, these lifestyle conditions are driving people into the ER more than anything you would consider acute, like um, <clears throat> injury or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, these situations in theory never have to happen, right? All of these cases could 100% have never occurred to that emergent level. Um, And that that was what was so shocking to me as well. And that it's multifactorial, you know, there's not one thing that's causing this, but part of it is a lot of people aren't following up regularly with their physicians, their primary care until something becomes urgent and you start to have acute symptoms. Gotcha. And that, another problem is just, you know, lack of prevention. Um, there's so many people in their forties and fifties that haven't been to a doctor in 20 years and they've never had a diagnosed condition. They feel okay or what they think is feels okay. Cause it feels sure. normal mm-hmm. until all of a sudden, you know, something's actually been accumulating for a long time. So um, we're not very proactive about our health as a, a society in general. We're not most of the average person isn't like checking a lot of things, staying on top of it. We tend to be reactionary where it's like, got something wrong, there's a symptom, and that's when I go seek help, or that's where I go think about my health. Um, And so there's, you know, lots of moving parts that need to be switched for that to keep reducing, but that's what we're chipping away at. Yeah, well, I think I would like to, I would like to think that we're in a different time now. And, and there is such an incredible amount of consumer driven health awareness at this point in time, you know, the millions and millions of people that have Apple watches and aura rings and continuous glucose monitors. And it's now becoming quite normal to, to have a person who's intellectually curious about engaging with their health proactively, which was probably not the case when you and I started our companies. When did you guys start? Uh, we started in about, you know, January of 2019, so the beginning of 2019, and launched the public in, in September of that year. Yeah, we started a lot earlier than that, and and none of this technology even existed when we were first yeah. trying to put this message out into the world. And um, you know, the number one health information website right now is Facebook, <laughs> which is which is groups with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who are self-organizing around a common ailment and collectively sharing knowledge and information. And, and there's pros and cons with that, but, but that didn't exist a, a while ago. So I think that's one of the, the biggest promises about the consumerization of all of this stuff is your friend is doing it and they're putting something out there and it's interesting and you try it. And now you get the warning light decades before you end up in the emergency room. And, and so that collective awareness, I think, is, is hopefully going to continue. And um, we can get into a debate about like whether or not the average Joe even knows how to interpret this data. I certainly have my opinions on it. But just the fact that that person is looking at it, whereas they weren't looking at it before, is an overall win. So I'm, I'm hoping that more of the consumerization here is going to lead to more people not ending up in the emergency room. What, what are your thoughts yeah. on that? I'm, yeah, I'm extremely optimistic. Um, and I've just been overwhelmed with our customers and how proactive they are about their health. There are certainly those people out there and they are asking for this information. They're asking for resources and ease of use and you know availability of the data about themselves so they can take charge of their health and then as that grows i do think it's going to be a ripple effect you know information spreads so much more quickly than it used to your friend posts on facebook or instagram or wherever um, somebody's talking about it that you follow or someone on a podcast and then that ripples much quicker than it used to be able to spread. And I'm extremely optimistic about the state. Um, I think that we're gonna continue to see the consumer themselves taking their health in their own hands, which is how I think that it needs to be, which is why we kind of, or I shifted in my career more towards a consumer focused approach. Same here. I built this app to give people access to all of their integrated health data on a single dashboard, which, when I started this, everyone told me it's never going to work. Everybody's tried it before. Nobody's going to pay, blah, 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 blah. Heard it all. And um, 
now you see that that the demand and the interest and honestly the outcomes that is actually the most important thing is is people you see online who have hit the weight uh, their goal weight from when they were 21 and they were obese <laughs> when they started down the path like these these are common everyday stories nowadays from everyday people with no medical training they're not technically savvy they're just the average person you give them a piece of technology that helps them understand and they figure it out and that's the outcomes that i think are the most important thing here so um we also have a huge emphasis on making this as accessible as possible to the individual much like yourselves we, we also have a, a portal for healthcare professionals who want to give their patients or clients i'll use the term clients because i think for both of our companies we work with a lot of groups of who are actually quite healthy and we have groups of athletes that are using continuous glucose monitors and we have actually a, a huge amount of healthy people that are wearing CGM, which is awesome. So let's just use that term. But we also have a, a portal where practitioners can invite their clients and start to do remote health monitoring. So um, you guys have two products available, correct? You have direct to consumer, the do it yourselfer, or honestly, a lot of a lot of people out there just can't find a doctor who wants to work with them in the way that they want to work with a doctor. Depending on where you live, there just may not be access to a physician or within your financial means, because if you're on insurance, you're kind of relegated to doctors in the network, and they may not want to work with you on some of these types of protocols that are not standard of care. So that leads a, a lot of individuals to the do it yourself, and you guys have that, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you also have a way for practitioners to equip a client with a CGM and, and do the remote health monitoring. And that provides that level of um, comfort and uh, security and trust that someone is going to help you understand how to maximize your success. So um, can you just talk a little bit about how you have both a consumer and a professional offering out there and just what, what kinds of, uh, what kind of feedback are you getting from the doctors and, and from the individuals who are who are using your product? Yeah, so we have one core consumer product and then we kind of have a few different options in beta testing that we do on a smaller scale um, for those who kind of reach out or who we're working with. So the main consumer product we have, it comes with three components. So it's the continuous glucose monitor, our dietitian coaching, and then our app. So. Yeah. When you sign up on the website, Nutrisense.io, you just fill out a quick health questionnaire and then we take care of everything else for you. So for those who don't know, part of the problem with all of this is that historically a continuous glucose monitor, I mean, even to this day is considered a medical device by the FDA. Um, it's not like that necessarily in some other countries, but in the US it's deemed a medical device, which means you need a medical prescription. So part of the reason a lot of these people who are trying to take charge of their health and get this data weren't able to, because you need to go to your doctor and you need to convince them to write, the, write a prescription for this device. And 99% of the time, if you're not an insulin dependent diabetic, unfortunately that physician's probably going to say no. And if they do say yes, you get this device with the basic app it comes with and you don't get any sort of analytics interpretation advice. So part of what we're doing is trying to reduce that barrier to entry so that people have access to this data we think is so important mm -hmm. for them. So you sign up on our website and the main differences on our core plan is just how long you wanna commit for. You could do a month to month where you can cancel at any time. And one month would come with two CGMs. They last for 14 days. And then you can commit all the way up to a year and it's significantly cheaper the longer you commit. But for all of those plans, you get two CGMs a month for however long you're doing it. You get access to our one-on-one -on -one dietitian coaching. So all plans come with the first month complimentary. So you can kind of see what it's like, see if that's Ooh. helpful for you. And how the dietitian support works is that they message you, you get paired one-on-one -on -one with someone and they message you through the app. So it's like an in-app chat and they can see all your data, all your information and help you out. 
Uh, so for some people in that first month, it might just be, you know, why did I have this spike or does this response look good or bad? Where for other people, it's much more in depth and, you know, they're coming up, they're doing real nutrition counseling. Um, and then they might stay on with that dietitian for a much longer period of time. But like you kind of alluded to, this data can be confusing. You know, our bodies are actually extremely complex for those who aren't already aware. And it's not as simple as I eat sugar and my glucose spikes and that's it. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving variables that can uh, affect our glucose levels and influence how they respond. And what I really didn't want when building this was for someone to try it think that they know what the data means, leave with the wrong insights, wrong information, and it doesn't actually move the needle on improving their health. So that's why we always pair that data with the human expertise to kind of find that sweet spot of, you know, providing people with the right information, but also making sure that they're maximizing it and utilizing it as much as possible. Um, and then of course the third component is our app. So on the app is where you see all your data and it's much more robust than the apps that come with the devices themselves where you can log your meals, your stress, your exercise, you have analytics, charts, graphs to kind of break down all the information and then also education in the app as well. So that's kind of our core product and it's direct to consumer. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, we have had people reach out to us. And so we're testing this out some more um, of clinics, you know, a chiropractor clinic or um, a concierge medicine clinic, or even just a primary care office where they want to use this device with their patients, but they already have their own team of dietitians or health coaches or physicians that can coach them. So uh, we give them kind of a software hardware package where they would have access to all of their clients data, they can help coach them through it, but they have this app with all the reports and statistics and analytics and kind of using that side of things. So, um, and we also have the option where if you wanted to use our dietitians as well, if you don't have anyone to help coach or you as a physician don't want to do the nitty gritty, you know, messaging them all day, which does take some time. We have the trained dietitians on our team who could also help your clients. So um, that is an option. You know, if anyone's interested in that, they can just email us and, and we can get people set up with that that's cool that's pretty much you've got something there for everybody it sounds like um you know i've i've been wearing a cgm myself for the last six months <clears throat> we also integrate with um the dexcom and the libre as well and it's it's been incredibly profound one of the more recent experiments i did i um i had really good success early on using a ketogenic diet it just works for my body and if I keep all else equal, my exercise routine, everything, my body weight will be stable. As soon as I push myself into ketosis, it's just a completely different experience. And, and I started doing keto long before the CGMs were even on the market. And just recently I went back to it and I realized how much easier it is even to do a ketogenic diet when you have the continuous glucose monitor, because what I was able to do was just say, okay, I'm going to slowly get my maximum daily glucose, even after a meal, like the highest spike would be like 120 on, on the whole day, which is kind of inside the app. That's where I set my high bar as I try not to go above 120. But I realized how much easier it is even to pulse in and out of ketosis when you have 24 seven glucose data, because you can just make sure nothing is getting you outside of your target range. And before, I'd take a fasting glucose in the morning. I'd hope for 85. That was kind of my goal. Most days I could get there. But the other 23 hours of the day, it was a black box. I didn't carry a glucometer around with me. I would never test when I'm on the go and busy. It, and, and that made it harder because you didn't know, especially restaurant food. Even if you think something is going to be metabolically safe for you, there's always something in there that, that kind of gets you. So um, I'm finding it actually to be extremely helpful for um, using a ketogenic diet and weight loss. So it's been um, incredibly profound for me. What would you say, Kara, the mix on your system, if you had to hazard a guess between people who have a chronic condition that they're managing with CGM versus those who are more into um, health optimization side of things? 
Yeah, and it's it's shifted a little since our very early days to now, but currently I would say, you know, it's close to maybe 40% of our customers are relatively healthy, no health conditions, so to speak of, whereas about more 60%, probably a little bit more than half, have something concrete they're working on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not always diabetes. So I would say only 10% of our clients actually have diabetes and they're really working to kind of manage that with lifestyle. They are really motivated to not get on medications and control it. Um, whereas, you know, the other percentage of people with chronic conditions, a lot of times it's something like hypertension, which is closely linked to insulin resistance or PCOS, Hashimoto's. Um, fatty so, liver. Yeah, fatty liver, chronic fatigue syndrome. Those are the conditions we're seeing really often where I think a lot of times they're pushed away a little bit from uh, maybe like traditional healthcare where they're just kind of managed in a simple way or not taken that seriously, especially some of these like chronic fatigue or Hashimoto's, um, but they know they don't feel optimal and they know there's more they could be doing. And they're using this information to kind of figure out their health journey on their own and kind of paired with our dietitian. So seeing amazing success from both ends and, you know, speaking to the person who doesn't necessarily have any conditions and they would be considered more of your biohacker. I kind of hate that term because I feel like if someone's healthy and cares about their health, we dub them as a biohacker when I think that they're just um, a health conscious individual, but we need uh, a better, we need a better word. We need a better for, word. For, yeah. yeah. Biohacker is starting to get a negative connotation, I feel yeah, like, which is unfortunate. Health, health optimizer or yeah, whatever. Health optimizer. An optimizer. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, which, you know, I would put myself in that bucket, but the amount of information you can learn about yourself, even if you're not managing something is outstanding. Um, you know, just hearing some of your story, stories, I can totally relate. I have done a lot of experimentation around cyclical ketosis, and that would be just so tedious and frustrating if I didn't have the CGM, because you'd have to be tinkering so slightly without having any feedback and then you don't really know if it's working or not. Um, but as soon as I started wearing the CGM more regularly, I was doing a lot of cyclical kind of in and out and it was just so much easier, but hundred times easier, hundred times easier. And again, motivating when something's easy, you see it's working, it's not working. You're much more likely to stick to it or do it more regularly totally. yep. because you, you know, and that's what we're seeing a lot of the times is there's this learning phase in the beginning. It's different for everyone, depending on what you have going on and how much you already know about this information. But in the beginning, it's all about learning, figuring out your unique responses, fine tuning things, experimenting. And then there's a behavior change aspect to it where it's, I've learned a lot about myself and now this device is really helping me stick to it, maintain the things I know I should be doing and actually seeing consistent results. And that is what is so exciting to me because that's missing normally. That feedback loop is really missing in health and nutrition because normally, you know, you eat something like let's say I have a piece of cake every day for 10 years. I don't really get that much feedback on it. You know, maybe I get labs once a year and then maybe they're skewing a little bit over time, but I'm not getting that daily feedback that like this is actually having some consequences. But when you can get that feedback and we can shorten that time gap between both benefits and consequences, same with positive things, go to the gym every day. You may not feel that great for the beginning. It might actually be not fun at all. You're sore. But if you could see your glucose lower immediately that day, you know, you know, it's an immediate win. It's so much easier to stick to that. And that's where I think really a lot of the beauty of data and continuous data specifically comes from is just making habits sticky. Uh, all healthcare practitioners can relate to this. You can tell somebody what to do until you're blue in the face, but unless they're going to do it and stick to it, you're not going to see the results that you want to see. So it's the most important factor at the end of the day. And it also creates incredible opportunities for practitioners to engage clients with positive reinforcement. And the most powerful thing you can do on our system, and I imagine it's the same on yours, is wake up and look at someone who had a great day managing their blood sugar and send them positive reinforcement on a consistent basis. I think that's extremely important. I think you also made a good point. These metabolic disorders really is death by a thousand cuts. And for many people, everything they're putting into their mouth in the course of a day actually is sending their glucose sky high. 
And you just don't know. You don't have an awareness until it's too late. So the real-time biofeedback, I think, is incredible. One of my favorite things right now is to use the CGM along with um, the BioSense, which is the breath acetone meter. If you've been on keto for a long time, you start to see that more of it is being utilized on the ketones. So you'll start seeing it more in breath versus blood. But a CGM with a ketone meter, let's just call it that, whichever one you want to use, is incredible. Because not only can you regulate down the blood sugar with the CGM, see that happening, then you start seeing the ketones start to ratchet up at the same time. For me personally, with my own body, N equals one that's really when my body composition starts to dial in is getting the blood sugar down. Okay. That's good. But it's not until I really press it down hard enough and get the ketones into a really good level. That's when it's just absolute nirvana for me personally. So um, combining those two, I think is, is a wonderful combination. The other thing you brought up is, is actually um, the concept of, of self mastery and with this data, you, without question, have the ability to 100% master your metabolism. And that's not a word that I use lightly because mastery, it takes years of practice and it's, um, it's um, let's just say it's not something I use lightly, but with this technology, with this real-time biofeedback, you can, in my opinion, absolutely 100% master your metabolism. And what that means is you can eat all your favorite foods, you can eat at all your favorite restaurants, and you can tailor those meals to make sure that, okay, I know this one always gets me on, on my glycemic response, and you make a slight modification to it, you get the real-time feedback. This is absolutely 100%, in my opinion, a way to develop mastery over a person's metabolism be, because you get that immediate feedback. And, and that actually is ultimately one of the largest components of longevity as well, which is healthy aging. And, and if you're at a, at an age, regardless of where you are in life, the sooner you can start making sure your blood sugar is in check every single day, everything else starts working better. You start sleeping better. You start regulating your appetite better. Your hormones, your hormonal systems start working better. Your energy levels get better. And longevity is, is such a fascinating topic and a huge market opportunity. Are you seeing a lot, Kara? I guess this is leading up to my question here, but um, are you seeing a lot of use cases around longevity with uh, starting to, to measure blood glucose now because people are looking to optimize 20, 30, 40 years down the road from now. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that's one of the driving motivations of our clients is the idea of health span, um, maximizing the amount of healthy years you have on this planet and minimizing that time at the end when our, you know we start to get more sick and have signs of aging that we want to avoid. A lot of people have those sick years for 10, 20 years, and we really want to minimize that and then push out the health span as much as possible. And it's very well documented in the research that this connection is strong. Um, that connection between longevity and health span and glucose and metabolic health. And, you know, kind of back to my original journey when I was really researching this problem and trying to understand what would be the biggest bang for our buck when trying to prevent some of those cases in the ICO scene? It all pointed back to metabolic health as the foundation of which you have to first address in order to improve health span, longevity, but all of those chronic conditions. Um, and that's why I got so interested in CGMs is because it being insulin sensitive and having good metabolic health is the core. You know, it's the absolute foundation of which you have to understand and you have to master if you want to live a really long, healthy life. Um, it's just kind of a non-negotiable. Those things go hand in hand. And a lot of people are realizing this, understanding this. I think more people are saying this message and making it more available where people are more excited about the idea of taking control of their metabolic health so they can have 
that health span they're looking for. Um, and related to the mastery, like you're saying, there are so many things that are unique to each individual. Exactly. We, are, we are not all the same person, you know, personalized nutrition and personalized health, I think is just going to absolutely keep growing as a way that we start to now think about health, but we are all different. You know, I am not going to have the same glucose responses as you, you know, I'm not going to have the same glucose responses as my colleague or my siblings. And you have to understand how you uniquely respond. What are the different hacks so that you can live a life that's not just 100% restriction all the time, but you know, what are the things where I respond awful to this all the time and I don't even really like it, not worth it. The things I love, I respond poorly to, I'm really going to be moderate about it. Or the things that I thought I might respond poorly to and I actually respond okay. You know, there's all this knowledge you have to first understand in order to master it and in order to have optimized metabolic health. And you just can't do those things if you don't know. Um, and that's where it starts with the knowledge and understanding and learning, and then you can execute and perfect and can be consistent over time. Um, but some of these things, you know, there's just no way of knowing you can try with a glucometer, but you're going to be pricking your finger a lot. And you're still probably going to miss a lot of these insights if you're trying to capture, especially how you're responding to meals and different foods. Um, and a lot of people can't feel it until they start actually seeing those patterns. I don't know about you, but a lot of people um, tend to find a benefit of the CGM that they weren't expecting to have is that they have this enhanced mind body connection. Yep. They now have a better idea of, you know, I know what it feels like when my glucose is above range or below range. I know what it feels like when I'm in a good spot. And now I have a more enhanced ability to moderate myself or understand what's going on because I could put those subjective experiences to objective data. When you connect those and you've done it enough, you have repetition, you can really start to understand it on your own, which is just an amazing benefit that you first have to train your system in order to know. You can't just guess and, and hope that you, you're getting it right. Well, for me, the, the word that I always use for that, what you just described, Kara, is awareness. And, and what the CGM and the NutriSense, and quite honestly, any, any medical device or digital health device, <clears throat> what these are doing is creating an awareness for a person between their actions and their body and that awareness did not exist before. Even if that person doesn't even really fully understand how to interpret the data, and maybe they even completely misinterpret it. I don't even give a shit. The point is that that person who didn't look at the, their blood sugar before looks at it now. And they may not interpret it correctly this time, but I guarantee you they're gonna do a little more homework and they're gonna interpret it properly next time, or they're gonna work with one of your dietitians who's gonna help them. So at the end of the day, I think the awareness that it creates for people to their body, between their mind and their body is, I think something you can't even really put a value on. And, and that's the promise of, of all of this amazing technology is, is creating that awareness that did not exist before. Even the people who never even thought of measuring their blood sugar before that do it now. You know, and that, that's why I'm kind of shocked. There was this whole controversy that came out recently about some, uh, published article that said our, our CGMs a waste of time and money for healthy people. I'm like, Oh my God. Uh, I don't know who has an ax to grind or some financial interest in putting that trash out there. But I mean, this is metabolic disorders are epidemic everywhere. And most of the food that is put out these days has disastrous effects <laughs> on, on blood sugar. And people don't realize that uh, in many cases, not all, in many cases, food is actually engineered to hijack the brain's reward circuits. And this is what the average person is up against. Food companies with fMRI machines in the lab that are activating reward centers in the brain with different foods. And then you have to expect the average Joe to be able to somehow magically self-regulate their blood sugar when a product is engineered <laughs> to hijack, that's an extreme example. And there's lots of amazingly healthy glycemic friendly foods out there. But for a large percentage of the population, the food is so rewarding and, 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 and it's actually disastrous 
for blood sugar. The more rewarding it is, it's like, I'm sure you see the patterns. It's like within 15 minutes of eating some of this crap, your blood sugar is at 180 instantly. Yeah. It's disastrous. And um, that's also what we need to help people get ahead of. So um, it actually gives the individual a fighting chance. <laughs> when, yeah. you, when you really think about it for most of the people who are out there i'm not talking about you or i i'm talking about the person coming into the er and and if you can just give them a fighting chance stuff that 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 is their comfort that is the reward that they had no idea what this is doing to them you know that's really where this starts to have an impact and i, and I guess this is leading up to a, another question here kara is um how do we get this technology to the point where it's accessible affordably and without a prescription. I'm from Canada. I go home to visit. I buy my Dexcom sensors there because I don't need a prescription and they're way cheaper. And, and you can just go buy them in the store. <laughs> and, and here it's like, oh man, I got to find a prescription. My insurance is not going to cover it. You know, they're going to gonna pay through the nose for the damn thing here. So um, what are your thoughts on, on where this is going and how do we get this to the point where it's more accessible for more people, the people coming into the ER, how do we get it to those people? Yeah. And I think a lot of it also comes from awareness from that perspective of the more people who have an ability to make a difference. So people in the healthcare system, people in the regulatory system need to understand the benefit so that we can change the way we think about these things. Uh, I saw that article as well. It's very frustrating because I think a lot of um, that individual's argument against the CGMs was that a lot of people who wear them end up finding out that the glucose is healthy. It's like, well, but you have to test it to know. What about all of the other people who found out I actually do have insulin resistance or I have extremely abnormal glucose values, but it wasn't caught by my fasting glucose because it's postprandial. You know, it starts with awareness. You have to be able to have access to this information so that you can make educated decisions and changes about your health. Um, but with the prescription requirement. I am again forever an optimist, but I'm optimistic that this will change over time. I do think that will eventually get changed the more there's a demand for the devices and the more that consumer companies like, like NutriSense are putting this information out there. Um, there's certainly a chance that FDA will change that, but it has to come from FDA for the prescription ruling. Gotcha. Um, so there's definitely so how do you guys handle that? You obviously have a way to get people the devices as part of your program, correct? So if you're listening, because a lot of people come and ask me, they're like, hey, I, I want to try CGM. Do I need a prescription? So can you elaborate on, on how NutriSense handles that? Yeah, so we we take care of all of that, and but we are actually writing prescriptions for people. Um, so when you sign up on our website, you fill out a quick health questionnaire, and that and we have then a network of physicians in all 50 states that can write a prescription for that individual. And you can write a prescription for you know just for education. You don't have to have, have diabetes. You won't get labeled with diabetes. A lot of people are worried that if they have a prescription for this, that they're going to somehow have like a diabetes diagnosis on their record. You don't need to have diabetes. That's just typically what physicians um, will write it for, but you can write it for anything. Um, weight so, loss. How about yeah, that? Weight like loss. Obes obesity, all, all of the things that are ultimately metabolic in nature. Exactly. Exactly. So we do take care of all of that for you. So um, you don't have to worry about getting your own prescription, um, but we do still have to write it for you. So it's part of the process that we're taking care of for people. Cool. Yeah, there was another really interesting blog post that came out recently, which was just starting to look at what, what were some of the most commonly reported foods that kind of got people by surprise. Like, whoa, I had no idea. <laughs> I have that, a couple that, of those. Yeah. Yeah. So give us give us a couple sound bites here. Yeah. And not to throw anyone under the bus, like companies, I'll try to be as generic as possible, but Costco rotisserie chicken. I'm not the only one. It has dextrose in it. If you look at the label, you see that, but you don't nice. think about it. Uh, you know, I was like, what the Costco heck? rotisserie <laughs> chicken. What the heck is going on? Yeah, there's sugar in everything. Um, and then also That's for me. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, and not to call anyone out too much, but the smart sweets that are kind of popular, this gives everyone a glucose spike they're that they have some artificial sweeteners but they have some fibers that seem to break down into sugar mm -hmm. um and also 
oat milk <laughs> is one of those things that a lot of people drink oat milk. But it's that, healthier. I'm not drinking that, cow's milk. That is just like soda and a soda equivalent. Damn. It's, it's a universal glucose spike. So Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's another good one. See, yeah. this is why and now it's oat so milk lattes are starting to become popular. And I'm like, no, please don't. It sounds so healthy. Yeah. It, you know? <laughs> Man, those are you know, that's why this gets so interesting. And it just goes back to this concept of mastery, which is like, oh crap, I had no idea the friggin' Costco rotisserie chicken and the oat milk yeah. latte. And you're having that two, three, four times a week. That's maybe, thing, maybe yeah. you're having your oat milk latte once or twice a day. And 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 this over time, you know, these when your body has more glucose in it. Then, then it knows what to do with, it gets stored as fat. And so you're constantly putting excessive sugar into the body, excessive glucose, and it just goes basically and gets stored as fat reserves. And, and you had no idea that your harmless oatmeal latte is contributing to this problem. Yeah. And that's where I think is the absolute biggest win of these devices. Even if you just wear one for two weeks, if you can see the things that you eat on a regular basis and make sure at least double check that they're okay. Exactly. Or if you have one of those, oh my gosh moments, because if you mean well, you know, food marketers are extremely tricky. The new world of nutrition information is extremely confusing. A lot of people mean well, and they're trying to be healthy, but something you could be having every day might be having an actual detrimental effect. And those are the things that it's so imperative that we understand and catch early. That's what I think that article doesn't understand. Yeah, that person might not have diabetes, but if we eat that every single day for 20 years or, you know, repetitive amount of time, that is going to lead to serious problems. Um, you know, everyone knows when, if you have soda on a weekend, it's probably not going to go so well. If you binge eat a whole cake on your birthday, probably not going to look that good, but those things aren't as important as the things that are part of your day-to-day -day regular routine. And those are the things we absolutely have to understand. Like you need to know how your most common foods are affecting you in order to live that, you know, long, healthy health span. And look your best too. I mean, everybody absolutely. wants to have healthy body composition and, and have a strong and healthy physique. And it's these little micro changes you can do. And, I, and I'm not going on the record here all dogmatic that you have to never never touch the foods you enjoy anymore there's tons of ways to still enjoy your favorite foods in smaller portions or with very slight modifications and still actually eat quite honestly better food and more tasty than all of the stuff that was there before that was really um, not good for you exactly. glycemically even just eating half the portion instead of the whole, you know, simple little tweaks like that. And, and there's lots of ways to, to optimize once you have the information. Absolutely. And that's something where a lot of, we, we ask our clients to give us what their top takeaway was. And something we started seeing over and over is that people said, you know, I thought I was going to do this and have to restrict everything, have to be, you know, hundred percent keto all the time, never have any carbohydrates or never have my favorite foods. And then I actually left this with more flexibility in my diet than I had when more. I started this, yep. which is so empowering. You know, it doesn't have to be a miserable life related to food. Food should be fun and enjoyable, but it's about the awareness, again, back to awareness of really understanding where to make adjustments, how to fine tune things, how to find that balance in a realistic way. And you can have certain things, but you have to know, you know, how often is optimal? What are ways to do it? What is the portion size where it's going to be okay without too much harm? All these little tricks that you learn over time, um, but it allows you to be more flexible at the end of the day, which helps you to enjoy life as well. Yeah, even simple things I've been I've been learning from people with CGM, like making sure they get a 20 minute walk in after they eat a meal that they know is going to have excessive mm -hmm. blood sugar, just going for a walk, the, the physical activity of the walk, you're going to burn off some of that excess sugar. So, so you could probably eat something you enjoy, and know that it's got a lot of uh, un unhealthy metabolic response, but just say, Okay, I've, I've buffered in a 20 minute walk afterwards, or um, putting some MCT oil on certain things 
uh, that can also help blunt any of the, um, of the spike. And I agree with you. My diet actually got um, less restrictive when I started having the data. Cause I'm like, Oh, I didn't know. I could actually, that actually is fine for me. Yeah. I actually started eating more carbs when I got a CGM. So um, it, it expands your range of what's possible. So um, anyhow, we, we could nerd out on this all day, Kara, but I wanted to get NutriSense and, and your company in front of the audience at heads up because I just am a big believer in, in the promise of this technology. It, it gives everybody out there a fighting chance against metabolic disorders. And at the end of the day, that's, that's the most important thing is, is empowering people who may not otherwise have the education, the budget, the means, the knowledge, the access to the, to the tools that are going to keep them out of the ER first and foremost, and also keep them looking and feeling and performing at their absolute best. So, um, thank you for coming on here and, and sharing all of your knowledge in closing. Are there any other just, uh, closing best practices that you would recommend to people. And then also uh, for those who are listening and, and they want to get started, how, how can they um, find you guys and, and get going? Yeah. So I guess in, in closing my, my mantra, I always tell everyone is data over dogma, you know, tests don't guess. And I think that's really kind of what we're talking about here. And if you do want to learn a little bit more about your unique responses, you would just go to NutriSense.io. That's where you sign up. We also have blog and newsletter, a lot of information there. If you just want to kind of learn a little bit more. Um, and we're also putting out some interesting information on our social media, NutriSense.io as well. It's super fun. I encourage everybody to do it. It is fun. Yeah. Anyhow, Kara, you've been amazing. Thank you for your time. I wish you and Dan and Alex the absolute best of success with your endeavor. And I'm sure that we'll have many other opportunities to collaborate. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much.